Okay, let's check out the selection. These are all meat-free products that aim to mimic meat. And a lot of them taste pretty good. But almost none of them would actually fool you into thinking they're real meat. Why is meat so hard to imitate? This is Minute Food. And we're dedicating a few videos to some of the ways people are trying to make meat just as delicious, but more responsible. Last time, we took a spin through the weird world of lab-grown meat. Now, we're gonna dig into meat that isn't actually meat at all. First, our patented, nobody's paying us to say this stuff disclaimer. As usual, none of the companies mentioned in here, or any meatless meat companies for that matter, are giving us any money to make this video. On that note, if you wanna give us money, check out our Patreon community. Anyway, animal-free proteins are nothing new. Lots of people in lots of places have been eating them for lots and lots and lots of years. Some are more similar to meat than others, but in general, these foods were invented as vegetarian sources of protein, not to mimic meat as closely as possible. In fact, lots of vegetarians don't want to eat something that's super meat-like. But if we want to fix the big problems with eating meat, we need to get mainstream meat eaters, like me, to replace at least some of the meat in our diet with animal-free products. And study after study after study has found that in order for that to happen, we need products that are super meat-like. But that turns out to be remarkably hard, because plants are pretty different from animals. Obviously, right? But I'm talking on a molecular level. Take proteins. Animals' muscles are mostly made up of bundles of interlocked fibers. Those long, fibrous proteins are what give meat its springy texture. But most plant proteins take a very different form. They're coiled and folded up into tiny balls. These much smaller, much less cohesive proteins are why plant-based products like veggie burgers tend to be soft and crumbly rather than springy and chewy. The fats in plants and animals are also fundamentally different. Animal fats tend to be saturated. As a result, they stay solid at higher temperatures than plant fats, which are generally unsaturated. That may not seem like a big deal, but it can mean the difference between a food that melts at room temperature and one that stays intact. Animals also tend to have more fat than plants, and that fat is distributed through animals differently than it's distributed through plants. Animals also contain all sorts of substances that plants don't, or at least not in large concentrations, like heme, the molecule that makes meat meaty, and nucleotides, the compounds that make meat over-the-top umami-licious. So considering all these pretty fundamental differences, how can you turn this into something that can pass for this? Wait, no, for this. The first way is to modify basically every aspect of it. This is what a lot of the most famous meatless meat companies, like Beyond and Impossible, do. Using some complicated chemistry, they uncoil those knotted up plant proteins, stretch them out, and link them together to end up with proteins more like the fibrous ones found in meat. They supplement the limited amount of naturally occurring fat with additional plant-based saturated fats. In a weird convergence of very different processed foods, many of these companies use the flash freezing method pioneered by the ice cream company Dippin' Dots to solidify the fat so that it can be distributed in a way that better mimics the fat in meat. Finally, they add plant-based heme and other flavorings to ensure the taste and appearance are right. In other words, many plant-based meat mimics are super processed foods. I'm not gonna go down the processed foods rabbit hole in this video, we can do that another time. But what is relevant here is that while super processed plant-based products are decent at mimicking super processed animal-based products, like nuggets, sausages, and burgers, they aren't very good at all at mimicking whole animal products, like steak or chicken breasts. There are a small number of other less processed roots out there from this to something like this. The stringy texture of jackfruit, for instance, can somewhat successfully replicate pulled chicken or pork. And I visited a company called Finless Foods, which makes plant-based ahi tuna from a gourd, often called winter melon. It's diced up, dehydrated, and stewed with a few other basic ingredients for flavor and color. It was really tasty, but neither the texture nor the flavor perfectly replicated yellowtail. It was more successful in a tuna roll, where it was masked by other ingredients, than on its own. Considering the pretty big differences between plants and animals, there's another option for creating vegetarian meat mimics. Skip plants altogether and use something more closely related to animals, like fungi. But we're not talking mushrooms here. We're talking about a few species of microscopic filamentous fungi. 
The big benefit is that these fungi are inherently fibrous, so they don't need all that much processing to turn them into something resembling meat. I visited the Better Meat Company, which produces this stuff, called Mycoprotein, and I tasted it unadulterated. And while the texture is pretty good, on its own, it doesn't taste much like meat. It does have some good umami going on. Again, since fungi are relatively closely related to animals, they produce some of the same umami-rich compounds. But in order to make mycoprotein taste more like meat, manufacturers have to add some other flavoring ingredients. The result, which you can buy under a bunch of different brand names, is, I don't know, kind of successful at mimicking meat. But there were a few dishes I tasted at Better Meat Company that blew me away. These were ones where mycoprotein was combined with actual animal proteins, like with real crab in this crab cake and real tuna in this sushi. And I know, putting real meat in there makes it a definitely not animal-free product, which might seem like it defeats the whole point. But remember, I'm coming at all this from the perspective of reducing our overall meat consumption. And let's be honest, the meat mimics we have right now aren't perfect, or even close to perfect. And research shows that the fact that their taste and texture aren't quite there does keep people from buying and eating these products. Using a combination of vegetarian and animal protein might get close enough to the taste and texture of actual meat to convert meat eaters that aren't willing to switch over to the fully vegetarian products that are currently available. So far, these kinds of blended products have only had limited success. I couldn't find any in my local store. But there are a lot of companies exploring the idea. The bottom line is that there's no single path to making meat out of, well, not meat. The good news is that every single path I mentioned is way less crappy for animals and for the environment than most commercially available meat. And while none of these products are perfect meat mimics, they're constantly getting better. Impossible burgers have already been through multiple reformulations since their launch in 2016. So don't be chicken. Try some of the options and see what you think. But hang on, I want to take you to another, even more overwhelming section of the grocery store, the wine aisle. Honestly, I usually end up choosing based on the labels, which it turns out is not the best way to pick wine. Bright Cellars offers a totally different way. Answer seven ridiculously simple questions, get wine suggestions from all around the world, and a few days later, a box of personally curated wine shows up on your doorstep. If you don't like a bottle, they'll replace it. And one bonus I really love is these gorgeous cards with notes about each wine, including food pairing ideas. Yeah, this is an ad, but I honestly do think that Bright Cellars is remarkably good at making wine a fun, approachable experience, rather than a stressful cross your fingers one. And it's remarkably affordable too. As a Minute Food fan, you can get your first six bottle subscription box for just 60 bucks. Plus, your purchase will support us. Click the link on screen and in the description to give Bright Sellers a try.